Chapter Eight. Emma thought about the trip to Box Hill all evening. Maybe the rest of the party had enjoyed it, but she could only think of Miss Bates and how angry Mister Knightley had been with her. She knew she had been wrong, and she was certain she would never do it again. She decided to call on Miss Bates the next morning. Emma went early, and as she walked into the room, she just had time to see Jane go out of the opposite door. We are very happy to see you, Miss Woodhouse," Miss Bates said. Although Emma thought her voice was not quite as friendly as usual, she asked about Jane. Poor Jane has an awful headache," she told her. "She has been writing letters all morning to the Campbells and to her other friends. We shall be so sad when she goes, but it is a very good opportunity for her, you know." Emma was surprised. Where is Miss Fairfax going? She asked. To a Mrs. Smallridge, three delightful little girls to look after, an old friend of Mr. Elton's. Jane will be just like Mrs. Weston was to you and your sister. She finally decided to go yesterday evening, when we were at Mrs. Elton's house. A lovely evening with good friends. And. When is she going? Very soon, within a fortnight. My dear mother does not like to think about it," said Miss Bates sadly. Emma stayed a little longer, and then walked home. When she arrived, Mister Knightley was at Hartfield, and he seemed more serious than usual. I wanted to see you before I went away, Emma. I'm going to London to spend a few days with John and Isabella. I have been thinking about it for some time. Emma thought he looked as if he had not forgiven her. He stood, ready to go, but not going. And Mr. Woodhouse chose that moment to ask her how Mrs. and Miss Bates were. Mr. Knightley suddenly appeared to be pleased with her. He took her hand. And she at first thought he might kiss it, but he let it go again. Then he left immediately. Emma felt happier now that they were friends again. Her father said he had been there for half an hour, and she thought, "What a pity I did not come home sooner." The next day brought news from Richmond. Mrs. Churchill, Frank's aunt, had suddenly died. Mister and Missus Weston were shocked, and Emma wondered how Frank's life might change now. Perhaps he would be able to marry Harriet if he wanted to. Emma still hoped for this, but it was too soon to make any plans. Emma's first wish at this time was not for Harriet, but for Jane. She wanted to be a friend to her now, before it was too late. And she went away to Mrs. Smallridge. She wrote to her, and invited her to come to Hartfield for the day. Jane thanked her for her invitation, but refused. Emma heard that she was not feeling well, and thought an hour or two in the countryside might help. So she offered to call in her carriage one day. Jane replied that she was not well enough to go out. But when Harriet said she had seen Jane out walking only that morning, Emma had no doubt. Jane did not want any kindness from her, and she was very, very sorry. One morning, about ten days after Mrs. Churchill had died, Mr. Weston called at Hartfield, and asked Emma to go back to Randalls with him. Mrs. Weston must see you alone," he said. Emma could not guess what might be so urgent, and when they arrived, Mr. Weston left them alone together. Frank has been here this morning," said Mrs. Weston. "He came to talk to his father about something. A young lady he is in love with. 
Emma thought first about herself, then Harriet. Frank and Jane Fairfax had been secretly engaged since they met in Weymouth last October, she said. Emma was very surprised. Jane Fairfax? So they were engaged before either of them came to Highbury, and nobody knew about it. We are very upset by the way he has behaved, especially to you, Emma. We cannot excuse him for that. You need not worry about me. When we first met, I did think he was very attractive," said Emma, "and I thought I was in love with him. But for at least the last three months, I have not felt at all like that." Mrs. Weston was much happier then. And called her husband into the room. It was our wish that you should love each other, and we thought you did. Since this morning, we have felt very upset for you," she said. But he was very wrong. He might have made me love him. And what about Jane? She is going to Mrs. Smallridge now. He did not know about that, Emma. It was only when he found out. That he decided to tell his uncle and then come here," said Mr. Weston. And Mr. Churchill was happy with the match. While Mrs. Churchill was alive, there was no hope of them marrying, but now they can. She will be a good wife for him," said Emma. "I congratulate you and them." Emma now had to do a difficult thing: tell Harriet. Before she heard about it in Highbury, Harriet had just come home when Emma arrived. Miss Woodhouse, isn't the news very strange? What do you mean? What news? About Jane Fairfax and Frank Churchill. They have been secretly engaged, and are now going to be married. I just saw Mr. Weston. And he said you already knew. Harriet certainly did not look upset, and Emma did not understand it. Did you ever suspect that he loved her? Asked Harriet. Of course not. I let you hope for him. Me? I have never hoped for Frank Churchill. Harriet, what do you mean? I know we agreed not to speak his name. But I do not understand how you could have made this mistake. I spoke of someone much better than Frank Churchill. Emma sat down and tried to keep calm. Let us be very clear, Harriet. I remember you saying how you felt when he saved you from the gypsies. I am certain I did not imagine it. At first, Harriet looked confused. Then she said. I remember the conversation, but I was thinking of something very different at the time. The night of the ball, when Mr. Elton would not dance with me, and there was no other partner in the room. Good God! cried Emma. You are speaking of Mr. Knightley. This is an awful mistake. Harriet did not think so. He is kind and sweet to me, and you said yourself. Strange things have happened before. Suddenly, Emma realized why it was so much worse now that Harriet was in love with Mr. Knightley and not Frank Churchill. It cut through her like a knife. She would be unhappy if Mr. Knightley married anyone except herself. The rest of the day and the next night, she did not stop thinking about it. How long had she loved Mr. Knightley? How could she be happy now without him? He was coming back to Highbury very soon, and until then, Emma decided she and Harriet had better not meet. Mrs. Weston visited Jane Fairfax, and she told Emma about it afterwards. She only decided to go to Mrs. Smallridge. Because she believed Frank was in love with you.
and they could never marry. Now that she has spoken to him again, and the secret is out, she will not go. She said you were very kind to her recently when she was ill," said Mrs. Weston. "I am glad she is happy now, and very sorry if I sometimes hurt her in the past," Emma replied. That evening there was a storm, and it continued all night. Emma sat quietly with her father, and it reminded her of the evening of Mrs. Weston's wedding day. Then Mr. Knightley had walked in soon after tea and made them feel happier, but everything was different now. Mrs. Weston had told Emma she was going to have a baby, so they were probably going to see less of her. Jane and Frank were getting married and might not live in Highbury, and if Mr. Knightley and Harriet married, she would also lose her two dearest friends to each other. There might not be other evenings when Mr. Knightley just walked into Hartfield for the evening. Emma felt very sad, and could not sleep that night. The bad weather continued next morning, but in the afternoon it stopped raining. The sun came out, and it was summer again.